Welcome back, and today we have one coming from Aurora Knife and Tools. Uh, this is the Truffles. OEM for this is a, a new OEM that I've never heard of before, but he, he found them at SHOT Show. He's very impressed with their products, so he tried them out. The name of the OEM is Sikio. The release info, you can find it at meattruffles.com forward slash news i will have that linked down in the description it's going to be i think a kickstarter campaign and right now there is no price on it he wanted me to give him my opinion after handling handling the knife what i thought a good price point would be and i'm sure the other reviewers are going to give that input as well the specs on this one, it's a full-size EDC knife, maybe in the larger range for some people at 8.1 inches and a 3.4 inch blade. You have a grip area from here to this point right here of 3.89 inches, so it should fit your medium, large, probably even extra large hands just fine. Stock thickness is coming in at 0.127, and with this deep hollow grind right here, it comes down very, very nice and thin, all the way down to 11 thousandths at the thinnest portion of that edge. And then right up here, you have a, a flat grind, and it's still pretty nice and thin at 13 thousandths. So this thing should be a super slicer. So a close look at that blade. You have a Tanto blade here, like I said, with a multi grind on it. You have a nice hollow here flat transition grind up here in the front for a little bit you know tougher work maybe uh, you have a very needle like point right there great for piercing um, there's a belt satin finish on it it's a fingerprint magnet of course but i think it looks pretty nice it's nice and even it's not splotchy anywhere you have a long blade hole for deployment something we'll talk about in a little bit you have a well done sharpening choil. You can see that plunge comes right here where my fingernail is. So you should have a lot of sharpening life before it starts to widen up in the back. Excellent job. No real useful jimping uh, for grip at least, but you got a nice flat portion right here to rest your thumb and it's nice and comfortable. You have a nice chamfer going all the way down on that spine so you don't have any sharp areas where you don't want them to be. Now, since this is a prototype, he asked me if I could not do the testing on this particular one. He said once he gets a, some production samples in from the actual production run, then he said he may send one over for me to do my normal testing. All right, we're going to test the edge on this uh, truffle. This is a factory edge. He asked me if I would test it. So we're going to do three tests. The lower the number, the sharper. Uh, let's get into it. We'll take three readings and then average them out. Test number two. 210. Test number three. 200. All right, so we're going to take the average of the three scores. The first test was 205, second test 210, and the third one was 200, and the average of those three numbers is 205. So let's see where he's at on the chart. So 200 is utility rates for blade sharpness, and 300 uh, to about 350 is new high-end cutlery. So they're they're right uh, above the utility razor blade sharpness, which I think is excellent for a factory edge. But I can tell you from the actual geometry standpoint and the sharpness, uh, this thing should slice very well. The blade steel on this one is S35VN. Of course, I would have liked to see something a little bit better than that, but S35 is an excellent steel, especially if it's priced right. Don't know what the HRC is going to be. Uh, maybe that's something that they will state in the uh, Kickstarter campaign. Now let's close it up and we're going to take a look at the locking mechanism because that is the star of the show for this knife, in my opinion. It's a brand new locking mechanism that is patented by uh, CKO. And I think it's pretty interesting. Now, I don't know how tough it is, of course. I, I would have loved to be able to have one of these do some hard use testing on it. But from what I can see in there, you can see that kind of like a liner locking leaf right there. Uh, I'll try to pop some pictures up if I can. If I can get some clear enough pictures, he showed the internal workings of this. But you can see that locking leaf goes underneath this, this titanium backspacer. And it's causing some upward pressure which pushing down and this is pushing up like that um, and then there's a little mechanism in there <coughs> that kicks the blade up 
in the open position. And once you press this button, only on the right side, press this button, it pulls that liner out of the way and then releases the blade. One cool thing about that locking mechanism is it's a very safe locking mechanism. Just like a button lock keeps your fingers out of the blade path when you're closing it. And like I said, the cool factor as well. Because of that lock, you have four different means of deployment. You have a regular flipper, a front flipper, a blade hole, and deployment from that button there. Now, as far as the deployments, my favorite is the reverse flick because I find it to be the most snappy. You got a long blade hole, so you can pretty much hit it anywhere you want, uh, wherever your hands lay come out. So it makes it very easy to do. You can slow roll it. It's, it's a little bit more difficult just because of how low the blade sits. Now, I can do it reliably. Uh, I can even, oh, I can even thumb flick it. But like I said, it would be a little bit easier if that blade was maybe up to about right there. But then you got to worry about that tip. So I get it. Uh, the, the, the second favorite of Vermont for me is the regular flipper. I think it, it fires out pretty nicely with the light switch. And you could also do a push button. They also milled out some areas right here as a landing pad, a nice comfortable spot for your finger to land once you flip it. That's a really nice touch there. And for me, the hardest one to do is the front flipper. And I think it's whenever I'm trying to do it traditionally, like with your thumb, because of how my hands sit, that flipper tab wants to catch it. So I can do it. I just got to make sure I'm back behind it and I can flip it. Now you can, being that this doesn't have any lock bar for you to push on, you can easily do the reach around and it rockets out. Uh, it does have fine cut jimping. It is sharp enough. It could have been a little bit sharper, but as it sits, I think it's just fine. It works, uh, you know, it works good. Now, like I said, the opening methods are, are pretty snappy and it's, it's pretty darn smooth. It is riding on K-Trend ball bearings, but I do think if they uh, tightened, if they made the detent a little bit harder, you would have a very, very snappy action. See, it comes out pretty fast the way it is, and that's not something you knew, usually hear me say. I usually like my detent on that medium side because I'm scared it's going to be too hard for my hands to open. But even with a little bit harder of detent, you shouldn't have any problems flipping it for sure. And then with that long blade hole, get it down here. Even if it was a, a, a super hard detent, you should easily be able to flick it out. Uh, and I think even with a little bit more tension on that uh, detent, you will still be able to easily front flip it. Now, I'm not certain. I'm no engineer or anything, but it, it seems like it, it would make it even snappier. The closing action, like I said, once you push that button, it drops nice and free. Um, you, you can do it halfway and shake it down if you want. It's a very smooth action. Perfectly centered blade. <coughs> no play left or right. None up and down. Pretty solid lockup. Now, I can flex the blade if I wanted to, but there's no movement with that lock. All right, we're going to look at a macro of the inside of this lock. Uh, you can see the lockup right there. If I shine some light, you can kind of see that, that thing that I was talking about in the back right there that's actually, you know, working with this button. Let me push it out of the way so y'all can see. It's pretty, pretty genius there. I like it. Like I said, I don't know how tough it is. Uh, I would think it's about as you know tough as a regular liner lock, maybe a little bit tougher. Uh, the geometry looks pretty good. Uh, it's fair. It's not super steep. They are calling this lock the Roundhouse Lock. Uh, pretty cool name. They want to call it the Kick Lock because of the kick stop, and I think that was a good idea. You don't want to confuse people <laughs> uh, or think you stole some somebody's design or something. So. Definitely interesting. Love to hear y'all thoughts about it down in the description. Uh, your frame, titanium frame. I don't know if there's going to be any other variations of this. This is the only one that I know of as of now. Of course, this is not inset because of the way that button sits, but it doesn't cause any issues or anything when holding it. There are flat scales, as you can see, but you have these nice chamfers right here. It's, it's pretty, pretty comfortable in hand. Even though I didn't get to cut what I normally cut, I did push into some wood just so I can get some pressure into it just to see what it felt like with some pressure. And I had no hot spots that I noticed. You have T8 construction throughout. Nice cap screws there. 
it would have been nice to see those completely flush, but you know, that's, that's just a nitpick there. Um, you also have T8 on the mill titanium pocket clip and the pivot. You have a decent little ramp there. The retention point is on this right side. You can see that it is touching the scale. Um, it goes in and out of the pocket nicely. That's what you have sticking out of the pocket. And uh, it holds it fairly well. Say it could use a little bit more tension. And it's also tapped for left-handed carry. Now, that's another nitpick. I would have loved to see some sort of filler plate there. The same, you know, color as the tie. So it looks, you know, nice and seamless. Because that is kind of an eyesore right there. Now, I'm not certain about this, but it at least fits in the slot. This is a Spyderco wire clip replacement clip. And, uh... It does fit into the slot, so you should be able to use these clips, the Lynch clips, if you want. Um, and I'm sure if you wanted to put, put a wire clip on this, you could as well. Now, it is going to sit up rather high. Um, that's the only thing about this clip I don't love. Like I said earlier, you do have a tie backspacer that is flush, nice and well fitted there. Everything's nice and tight. <laughs> uh, you do have a stainless liner, I mean, yeah, locking leaf right there for the lock. None on the show side, I mean, on the opposite side, but you have tons of internal milling to try to reduce the weight as much as possible, being that you have, you know, tie backspacer, all the tie, the locking stuff, and the blade. First off in grams, 119.3 grams, or 4.2 ounces. Not bad. Completely ambidextrous knife being that it's fairly easy to press that button left-handed as well. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and 2. It's more similar to the Rat 1, but it is a little bit smaller. Next up, the Spyderco PM2 and Power 3. It's just a hair, hair shorter than the PM2. Lastly, we have the CRK Umnumzan, just for that Tanto aesthetic, and the only knife that I pretty much have that I could find that is almost identical in overall length is the uh, Kung Wu Nas X Teo. They're pretty darn close. And from a nitpick complaints, they're all nitpicks pretty much. Um, I think it would have been nice to have a filler tab here to, you know, make it cleaner looking. And like I said, I think it would be even nicer with a little bit stronger of a detent, even though, you know, it fires out pretty nice. Um, I think it would fire out even faster with a little bit stronger of a detent, but you know, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if he didn't do that either. And I know the weight may be an issue for some people, but I think it, I think it's nice. It feels substantial in the hand. I don't have to have a super lightweight knife to enjoy it. Uh, so overall, I like the knife a lot. Um, if, it, if it was another blade shape, like a drop point or something, I would probably definitely be picking one up. I'm not sure uh, about, you know, Tanto blade, but Oh, this nice thin grind, it's going to be so slicey, and I, that lock is very, very sweet as well. So, I don't know, I'm still on the fence. Um, if you like the overall aesthetics, I would definitely pull the trigger. I think it's a cool, innovative, new design. Uh, you get a new locking mechanism, and if you're a fidgeter, this is a fidgeter's dream. Um, it's also completely ambidextrous, so it's, it's a win-win all across the board. So, the pricing... After handling it, carrying it, you know, the materials, you know, this isn't including the, you know, the R&D for this locking mechanism, but it was already patented before, so they already had the locking mechanism. They did, they did have to uh, incorporate it into this knife, but with S35VN, you know, and other knives of this caliber, I would say 200 to 250 um you know if it was an upgraded steel maybe 300 but to me as it sits i think you know 200 is a great price 250 you know it's it's getting up there but it's still i think still a fair price you know it, it just depends i don't know you know what all goes into making the lock i know that inside there's like you know some set points in there that there's a lot of stuff that goes into it so you know, it's hard for me to say because I don't know about the lock or how much it costs. But I think it would sell well at 200 250 bucks. Y'all let me know. Y'all opinions down in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about it. And uh, hopefully we can get one of these to do some actual testing on so we can see how this bad boy slices. 
All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. All right, guys and girls, I'll see y'all on the next one. Kick peace!